Hello, I would like to welcome you to the second lecture of 2FH3. We'll be discussing today vector algebra. Um, we'll give an introduction to scalars and vectors, what's meant by unit vector, how do we do operations of subtraction and addition of vectors, what is meant by position vector and distance vectors, and what's meant by vector multiplications. We cover um, chapter 1, pages 3 to 15 in this lecture. So why do we need vector in this course? Well, I'm showing you here a figure uh, to the left. It's taken from one of my previous papers. It shows a model of a human being uh, using a cell phone. This, this cell phone has a built-in antenna, and this antenna radiates energy, electromagnetic energy. It radiates electromagnetic waves, um, and these waves travel at the speed of light, extremely fast speed, 3, 10 to the power 8 meter per second. And um, so some of these fields will penetrate the, the human skull, as shown to the, uh, to the, uh, to the right. And um, inside the human skull, at every point, you can measure an electric field. It, it has a strength. It, has, it, it can be a weak field or strong field. It has a direction as well. So most of the quantities we face in this course are actually vectors. They have strength at every point in space. They can be strong or they can be weak. And they have direction. An electric field can be pointing in any direction depending on its source. So this is why it's extremely important in the area of electromagnetics that we study vectors and understand how to use them. Quantities can in general be divided into two types, uh, scalars and vectors. Scalars are quantities fully defined by their magnitude by their strength and I use the magnitude the word magnitude as strength in an inter interchangeable way because electromagnetic fields when we say the magnitude of the electric field we actually mean the strength of the electric field um, some quantities like the time the distance the population the mass you don't really require direction you can say the population of a country is 10 million you don't have to say 10 million in the northeast direction or 10 million in the northwest direction. You don't have to define direction. Its population is 10 million. This defines a quantity in a complete way. So these are scalars, they don't require direction. But there are quantities, other quantities, that they cannot be defined by their magnitude or their strength only, like velocity, force, and field. For example, when you say the car is traveling at a velocity of 30 kilometers an hour, this does not really define the completely define the movement because you have to say 30 kilometers an hour at uh, maybe uh, uh, in the in the northwest direction. Uh, similar, the same thing for a force. When you say uh, that um, uh, a force uh, uh, has a value of five newtons, what does this mean? Five newtons applied to in which direction? Okay, so we have to give more information. The same thing for electric field. Electric field everywhere in space and magnetic field, uh, they have strength at every point in space. They may be strong or they may be weak, and they have direction. You may be pointing in any direction in space. We, so in order to fully define them, we have to give both um, um, the magnitude and the direction. Um, if you take a look at all electromagnetic books, publications, conference proceedings, and so on, you will see that vectors very often are indicated by bold face, quantities, so uh, whether it's capital letter or uh, small letters, sometimes it can be italicized or not. And in, 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 it's less, less common to use them as, uh, as um, symbols with arrows on top or bottom. This is less common right now. Not, not many journals are using that. Uh, while scalars are usually indicated by a regular face. So they are not bold, they can be italics or not. In the book, they are using um, bold, uh, uh, non-italicized fo font to indicate a vector. So, in general, when we talk about a field, a field, when we say the electric field or the magnetic field, we mean a, qu a, a, a quantity that whose magnitude is changing from point to another in the three-dimensional space and whose direction is, all, is also changing. Maybe changing, of course. Sometimes you can have constant vectors, but in general, they change from point to another in terms of magnitude and direction. In general, a vector will have um, three components, uh, x in the, AX in the x direction, 
a y in the y direction is in the direction as indicated in this equation um, this a x this a x and a y and a z the small ones the small and bold ones these are unit vectors in the direction of the coordinates this is a way of expressing vectors so when a, when a vector have three components you say it's a component in the x direction is a capital x and it's it's really a vector pointing in the direction of the x coordinate so we multiply it by the unit vector in the direction of x which is a, a bold a, a subscript x and so on in general and for all orthogonal coordinate systems the magnitude of the vector is given by the um, square root of the uh, sum of the squares of the components um, this is even though i write this equation for uh, Cartesian coordinates, but the same applies for any orthogonal coordinate system where the coordinates are normal to one another. Here we have the x coordinates, y coordinates, co z coordinates are normal to each other. The same thing will apply for in spherical coordinates for rho, phi, and z, will apply in spherical coordinates for uh, r, theta, and phi. So for any orthogonal coordinate systems, the magnitude of the vector is given by the square root of the sum of the squares of its individual components. If we take a look at the, at the figure we have here, this shows the coordinates, uh, coordinates directions um, x, y, and z, and you show the unit vectors uh, ax, ey, and az as indicated here in the direction of these coordinate vectors. Okay, And um, to the right, you see a vector a, um, and in order to find the components of the vector, uh, you draw, it, you draw uh, the vector from the origin, and so you can see this is the direction of A, which is shown here. And then you can decompose this vector into two components. One component, which is AZ, AZ, this is parallel to the Z axis. And another component, which I call it here, A subscript T, which is uh, uh, normal to the Z axis, actually in the XY plane. And this component, which is normal, which is uh, normal to the AZ axis, can be decomposed into two more components. Um, AX in the X direction and the AY in the Y direction. So in general, a vector will have three components. It's actually the sum of three vectors. AX, AX, this is the first vector. It's pointing in the X direction. AY, EY, this is the second vector. It's pointing in the Y direction. And the AZ, AZ, this is the third vector pointing in the Z direction. One point of warning here. A vector does not define a line. What does this mean? If I draw any line like here, and, and my hand is gonna drawing is gonna be a little bit coarser. If I draw another line with the same, with the same length, le the length here of the vector indicates its strength, its magnitude, and in the same direction, so it, it's parallel to A. Then it is exactly it will have exactly the same mathematical expression as A. So a vector does not define a line; it simply defines a direction. A direction with a certain, of course, and a certain magnitude. But there are infinite number of vectors that will have the same direction and the same magnitude. In order to define a line, you need a point of reference, as, as we will talk later uh, about position vectors. Okay, we'll start here by having an example. Um, we're saying I'm giving you the electric field E at a point to have three components, uh, three in the X direction, Four in the y direction and 12 in the z direction and the units of the electric field as we will know later is volts per meter I'm asking you to determine the modulus of E I'm asking you to determine the unit vector in the direction of E okay in order to solve this problem what is the modulus of any vector the modulus of any vector is, is its strength its magnitude Okay, and we obtain this as modulus by, it's equal to the, by the formula that I've shown earlier, is square root of the sum of the squares of all its individual components. So this is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 12 squared. And if you want to get a unit vector, very simple, if you want to get a unit vector in the direction of a vector, then div divide the vector by the scalar uh, but by its scalar magnitude, and then you get a unit vector in the same direction. 
So here in this slide, you, sh you see the exact steps I explained earlier. The modulus of E is equal to the square root of EX squared plus EY squared plus EZ squared, the three components. Uh, the numbers here are intentionally <laughs> easy to use, but the ones you are, you'll be working with may not be as friendly as this one. So the square, uh, square of 3 is 9, the square of 4 is 16, the square of 12 is 144. When you sum all these quantities, you get 169, the square root of 169 is 13. So we're saying that this electric field at this point has strength or has magnitude of 13 volts per meter. If you want to get the unit vector in direction of E, very simple, divide the original vector by its magnitude, which means that every component will be uh, divided by uh, this unit vector. So you get this vector here, 3 over 13 AX plus 4 over 13 EY plus 12 over 13 AZ. This vector A is parallel to E. It has the same direction. It has the same direction. But its magnitude, if you try to get its magnitude, its magnitude is equal to 1. And we use these, ve these unit vectors very often in electromagnetics when we talk about services. Sometimes we need to get the unit normal to a service. Uh, we use them in all types of analysis of electromagnetic problems.